Now I'm going, uh, uh, first I'd like to thank Esther for her presentation. She gives uh, uh, a brief idea about the technology, but uh, 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 people don't understand how we are going to use it. I've been using these machines, the cap energy machines for more than three years. I started in March. Slides don't uh, go down, why? Okay. I use it since March uh, 2019. So I'm going to cover the following four points. What is the mechanism of action of the non-invasive second generation radiofrequency or TCAR therapy? This is the prototype. It's one channel port for an active probe and port for a passive probe. But a lot of machines, two, three, and four channels, other machines have a vaginal probe that can be useful or very useful for chronic pelvic pain. When you go to the exact mechanism of action, we have an active and passive plate. The waves of the radio frequency at about 1 million cycle per second. It may be 800,000 or 1.2 million cycles per second coming from the active probe, probe hitting the passive electrode, returning back to the active electrode. This will lead to continuous bombardment of the tissues with these very high frequency waves leading to two important things. Number one, an electromagnetic field or a radio frequency field in the area between the two electrodes and internal heating of the tissues. This internal heating of the tissues is adjusted by the doctor. So increasing the efficiency. For example, on the display screen here, I adjusted at 37 in the red line and it reached it only about 30 by the blue line. So the desired temperature did not reach, so I have to continue my session. The second thing, this is controlled by machine. If I adjust it to 37 degrees and the temperature becomes higher, immediate switching off by the machines automatically. The patient has a control button so he can switch off. The doctor is watching and observing the temperature on the display screen, so this increases the safety. So we can increase both safety and, and, uh, and efficacy. Very important things. When we talk, Dr. Muhammad Hassan talked about genicular denervation. He inserting a needle for a specific nerve. When Dr. Ammar is putting an electrode over a specific nerve. Here, we are working not only on the nerves. We work on bone, vessel, nerves, muscles, ligaments, tendons, and fat. We relieve the subperiosteal edema. We vasodilate the blood vessels. We neuromodulate the nerves. We produce relieving of the muscle spasm. <clears throat> We improve the tensile function of ligaments and tendons, and we improve the tension and the function of fat. This will lead to disappearance of pain. We have a standard three electrodes, one plate and two probes. The first are the capacitive type. The plate is capacitive and the black electrode is a capacitive. They work on a very high water content structure, muscle, nerve, and vessels. And the TCAR therapy have the word of C, which represent a capacitive probe. Resistive, we don't have a plate. We just have only a rounded probe, and it works with tissues with low water content, bone, tendon, ligament, and fat. And the word R uh, uh, means resistive. So TCAR therapy means the transfer of energy between capacitive and resistive electrode. This is number one. The, the second question, is this non-invasive techniques effective? This question has been originated long time ago, but nowadays we are sure that I'm working, but how to optimize the function, how to get the best results. We have a lot of questions, a lot of puzzles. Where to put the active plate? What type of plate you are going to use? It is a capacitive or resistive? Which temperature? The duration of session, the number of sessions, the period between two successive sessions, the best pharmacology added to it. When we hear the uh, presentation of Dr. Milan, he said the protocol in the first two weeks, he do two sessions, two injections, then followed by six uh, injections every week. They put their own protocol based on the results. The second, uh, I, I, I picked this slide from Easter presentation. She said that we have four objectives. Number one, decrease inflammation or decrease edema. And she presented a study that the length has been decreased by four centimeters in one areas of the 
uh, and knee joints. So this is a real case. The patient is suffering from unilateral uh, osteoarthritis pain. These are the two active probes put on the sole of the foot and the passive electrodes on the back of the patient. So when you look to the machine, the uh, temperature here is 37. So I adjust the temperature on 37. The first channel, the temperature reaches 37 at two and a half minutes approximately. So this is a very healthy channel, but on the right side, the channel only 32. So I don't know, is it healthy or not? So in the same patient, we increase duration to 30 minutes. So after 27 and a half minutes, the temperature in the second channel is only 35. And the amount of kilojoules delivered to the tissues were 20 kilojoules compared to five kilojoules delivered to the healthy channel. So as you see here, a long time elapsed, we don't reach the desired temperature. So the patient is, the, or this channel is unhealthy. So the patient uh, has an osteoarthritis uh, pain. So this has a diagnostic and prognostic value. Sometimes a patient has unilateral pain. And when you do, the two channels are diseased. So the patients, we know that the pathology is bilateral, not unilateral pathology. The second point Easter uh, highlighted is how to decrease pain. So let's to know what are the sources of knee pain and how we can work on it. The subperiosteal edema, as well as the bone marrow edema, in the subperiosteal edema, the edema will compress the nerves under the periosteum and above the bone, inducing a very, very severe pain. And patient with osteoarthritis knee, it is not uncommon to find tenderness along the posterior border of the uh, tibia, from the knee down to the ankle. And this line is coinciding with the spleen channel in the Chinese medicine, which is important for motor local system. So working on this, being born with low water content, we have to use a resistive probe. We need to use a higher temperature. So usually I adjust it between 41 and 45, but always keep in touch with the patient. If the uh, heating, overheating, causing discomfort to go to a little bit lower and consider that patients who don't feel like diabetics don't burn this patient. The second source of pain is the muscle, which is a quadriceps muscle with a lot of publications that show the weakness either by osteoarthritis itself or weakness by total knee replacement following total knee replacement. And this weakness might be affecting the gait after total knee replacement and hazardous effect of tourniquet. So I can work on the muscle by its muscle. It has a high water content. So I use a capacitive plate at 40 to 42, better 42. And the tendon, again, it is low water content. So we have to use a, a, a resistive probe over the tendon. It's very common that the patient did uh, genicular denervation, like Dr. Muhammad Hussain said. The patient feel, I don't feel pain. But I cannot go upstairs. I cannot go down the stairs. I cannot move. He's still having weakness of the quadriceps muscle. So working with the patients, even after genicular denervation, will improve the muscle power. So after maximum five sessions, the patients say, now I can go upstairs. After 10 sessions, the patients usually say, I go upstairs with, even without support. When we talk about the nerves, the saphenous nerve is important. As Dr. Ammar highlighted, saphenous neuralgia after total knee replacement, the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous neuralgia after total knee arthroplasty. So we can work on the nerves. The most important thing that we have to work at a low temperature 37, which is very effective in neuromodulation of the nerves. The most important thing of the non-invasive TCAR therapy that we can work on more than one side. So if we put our plate over the anterior abdominal wall, we can work on the sympathetic chain, which is present on the anterolateral aspect of the lumbar vertebrae. We can work on the femoral nerve as it originates from L2, L3, L4 nerves. We can work on the femoral nerve down in the front of the thigh. We can go a little bit down and work on the superior medial, superior lateral, and all the genicular nerves, including the inferior, uh, superior, uh, superior medial inferior genicular nerve. And we can work, work on the superior lateral genicular nerve which we fear to, ner to nervate it for fear of sciatic nerve injury. The fat plays a very important role in generation of pain in the knee, which usually 
don't uh, consider by a lot of doctors. We have an intra-articular fat present in different places. And the most important is the Hoffa's pad of fat that might be the source of the pain. These fat, disease the fat release adipokines, and these adipokines has a destructive effect on all structures, the meniscus, the bone, the cartilage, the synovium, and the tendons. So if the fat in contact with its uh, uh, tissues is leading to chemical destruction, or these adipokines might circulate through the synovial fluid, affecting distant site, and unfortunately, adipokine receptors are widely distributed all over all structure within the knee, so uh, disease the fat will affect. The extra articular fat is not uncommon to find a, a, a excessive extra articular fat. It is very tender, you have to work on it. On the posterior aspect, the postromedial pad of fat, usually very hard, very tender, regulated pad of fat. So this fat, we should work on it using a resistive electrode because it has a low water content and we have to go with the temperature as high as the patient can tolerate. The intra-articular structure, I mean synovitis or bursitis can uh, a source of the knee pain, ligaments and tendons are, and all intra-articular structures might lead to knee pain. So we have to put the two resistive electrodes on the two points that being highlighted uh, by Dr. Milani uh, as a four points. And we have to work on the uh, tendon of the uh, quadriceps muscle. So this is a very important, and in Chinese medicine, the three points are very important, the 35, stomach 35, stomach 36, and one of the extra points. We have to allow the patient to flex his knees, so we allow the radio frequency beam to go inside the knee and to work on intra-articular structure that causing pain. We have to work on the back of the knee. This is the ninth point Dr. Milani showed in his presentation. The third thing uh, Pilar said is improve of tropism of the tissues. And by tropism, we mean nutrition of the tissue. As we said, the TCAR therapy produces an internal heat that vasodilates or vessels. So we have an arterial dilatation that leading to more blood going to the muscles, more removal of the waste products. We have a venal dilatation and lymphatic dilatation. All will help the tropism of the tissues. And when we go back to at uh, Pilar topics, she said this, the TCAR therapy or radio frequency waves improve collagen and elastin uh, production and, uh, and generation. And we go to Dr. Milani, he said three important, the protoglycan, the collagen and elastin. So two important uh, of the three uh, extracellular matrix has been generated by that. What's my dream? My dream to have a knee pain physician. And this NIMP physician can examine the knee so he can select which is a surgical knee and which knee that needs a medical treatment. He can advise pharmacotherapy without a hazardous effect on the kidney and the stomach and without putting the patient on, into opioid crisis. He can do non-invasive TCAR therapy, so he can do a non-invasive technique very easily, very simply at any stage before any other inter interventions. He can do safe intra-articular injections without seeing hematomas, without seeing infection, which is a nightmare during intra-articular injection. He can do safe extra-arterial injection using different materials, including collagen as one of them. He can do interventional pain procedure, whether thermal radiofrequency, as Dr. Mohammed Hussain do, and uh, genicular uh, peripheral nerve stimulator, as Dr. Ammar Salti, he is expert in providing knee anesthesia and knee analgesia using a lot of uh, knee blocks for intraoperative, whether adductor canal block, high plaque block, and uh, eye pack block. All these techniques that improve the quality of analgesia after the patient uh, after, during surgery and can deal with postoperative knee pains and is not astonished. And now in April uh, 22, I highlighted that I would like to be a pain knee pain physician. I might be the first one in Egypt. I might be in the whole world, I don't know, but this is my career a knee position. So I should do these seven points. Unfortunately, knee examination, I can do only 50%. Examining the lateral collateral, the medial collateral, uh, this is a little bit difficult. So I, I say, I evaluate myself that I can do only 50%. So in my uh, 
uh, multidisciplinary team, I have always a surgeon that he say there is a third or not. The second thing, I, I am not uh, interested in doing intraarticular injection. I never did it, but I am interested in extraarticular injections, so I can uh, do this. So this is the second thing that I miss. For invasive radiofrequency, I am expert in doing invasive radiofrequency for the genicular nerves, but I can do genicular denervation, but I know the uh, when to refer patients uh, for such sophisticated, complicated, expensive, that need a very, very high expert physician like Dr. Amar Salt. So I don't need a single uh, knee pain physician. I need a multiple knee pain physician in every country, in my country, in Egypt, and in all, in, in all other countries. So I reached the conclusion that you can walk 10 kilometers, but at the end, you get tired, you get exhausted, you get sweaty, and you can go these 10 kilometers using the car faster, easier, and without effort. And this Watti car therapy, it transfer energy directly to the disease tissue, so lead to rapid healing and less expensive. So what I'm going to say that all of us know that each uh, molecule of glucose produces 38 ATPs in a healthy tissue, but produces only two ATPs in a disease tissue. So what, what we are doing with the car therapy, we are giving energy in kilojoules, so we transform the disease tissue into a healthy tissue. So I'd like to say that the end, that MDT team is very important for success of knee care unit. And not a, a lot of uh, specialty should be present. The car therapy should be evaluated as a line of treatment of knee pain and should be started before going to the next step. And I believe that the car therapy will be a deflection point in the perioperative management of knee surgery. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for this great illustration and for your dream. And I wish that your dream comes true uh, soon. Um, at the end, uh, I'd like to thank um, all great speakers tonight and uh, uh, for their nice, excellent, and informative lectures and uh, for their great efforts. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Saad and all the organizers for uh, their great efforts. Lastly, many thanks for all attendees for their interest and attendance. Thank you. So at the end of uh, this uh, meeting, I hope it's a fruitful meeting for all of us. Uh, I, 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 it's one of the activities of our department in Cairo University. Uh, so we are focusing on specific areas. So we see all aspects, uh, how to use it. Uh, I believe going from a non-invasive to invasive will be better for the patient, safer for the patient with good results. And we can again use the non-invasive techniques or collagen injections to improve the results of our invasive procedures. So I would like by the end to thank all the attendees, Professor Dr. Saad Al Mahdi for his effort and uh, thank uh, all the speakers for the presentation. And I hope uh, a fruitful diet has been delivered to the audience. And thank you very much.